This year is the 40th anniversary of the debut of The Fifth Doctor, or I should say The Fifth Doctor's first season uh, with Castor of Alva, which broadcast in early 1982. And to celebrate this occasion, we've had a duet of box sets from Big Finish. We've had 40 Volume 1 and 40 Volume 2. Colin's here again. Go Colin, go away. Go away, Colin. I thought I got rid of you. Right. Crying out loud, this is a fifth Doctor review and Colin was on screen still. You'll remember I wasn't particularly enamoured with the box set. I also think that conceptually 40 and 42 are really strange when it comes to celebrating the fifth Doctor. Because for 40 volume 1, we had a story which <laughs> even more of... <laughs> one second. Even more of me! Because of 40 Volume 1, we had a story which was a sequel to Tomb of the Cybermen, so a second Doctor story. We had an Ice Warrior story, which the fifth Doctor never encountered on screen. And now for 40 Volume 2, we've got a story where the Master and the Autons, or the Nesting Consciousness, I should say, team up together. Which is like a sequel to Terror of the Autons, which is another third Doctor story. So what on earth is... I don't get the priorities of this thing either way. But even putting that aside, I wasn't particularly enamored with 40 especially how this is like the fifth big finish release in the past five years with the fifth doctor where he's mourning the death of adric and i'm not saying that's an insignificant event in his life but it's like mate, change change the record there's a little bit more to your character than just pining over adric the whole time it would be like if there was a 10th doctor anniversary set and it was just pining over rose the entire time it's like please just just give us something a little bit different but what we have now is that 40 volume one saw the fifth doctor being thrown down his time stream with secrets of telos basically taking place within season 20 god of war taking place in season 19 and now uh, 40 volume 2 which is a single seven part story the auton infinity by tim foley takes place within season 21 where we have the fifth doctor we've got turlo we've got tegan and we've even got chameleon where we've got mark strickson reprising his role as turlo and we've got janet fielding as tegan but we do not have the original voice actor for chameleon instead we've got john colshaw who is pulling triple duty here as chameleon the anthony ainley master and the brigadier so john colshaw has been a very busy chap in this box set and this is like i said a seven part epic single story the fifth doctor Tegan and Turlo land in the British countryside where UNIT are taking part in some military exercises where some of they've got one half which is basically UNIT soldiers the other half are wearing these masks which uh, which make them look like aliens and the Autons are possessing these masks because they're plastic and that's basically what they do and the Brigadier as well is there as a spectator to the event and the Fifth Doctor and the Brigadier come to loggerheads especially when they have to debate whether or not they need to shoot the unit soldiers who are being possessed by the autumn masks. So let's play a quick clip. Corporal Lasko, two formations, here and here. This is pointless, Captain. You're just putting men in harm's way. We're not quite as defenseless as you think, Doctor. Despite what Miss Holmes says, we do have emergency reserves of... Corporal Palmer! Uh, yes, sir. Break out the live ammunition. Release it to the men. Sir. Unit first response. Ready for anything. Mears, this is a bad idea. I respect your opinion, Doctor, but in these circumstances... We, we don't know what this alien squad really is, or what they've done, but we know they're your men, Captain, even if they're wearing masks. They're still a threat, whether they're responsible for their actions or not. Doctor, Captain Mears. What is it, Brigadier? On the map, alien squad are approaching from the north. We'll get a visual shortly. Are you armed, Brigadier? Always. No, 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 no. Brigadier, talk him out of this. It's not my place to do so, Doctor. Besides, I'd be doing exactly the same thing. I refuse to believe that. After everything we've been through. Enemy spotted, sir. I'm going back inside HQ. I can fix this. Just hang on. Look, coming over the rise now. He's right. They're my men. My men in masks. Whatever they did to third squad, they might be about to do it to us. 
Oh, sorry, apologies. Uh, I got that wrong. It's a six-part story. The Auton Infinity, the only story in this box set, is a six-part story, not a seven-part story. Apologies. But yeah, the Auton Infinity is... I do think it is a substantial improvement over the Secrets of Telos and God of War. I think out of the three stories, this is easily, like, head and shoulders the best of the three. And I think when it comes to celebrating the 40th anniversary, the 40th birthday of the Fifth Doctor, the Auton Infinity does a substantially better job. Not just because it is, like, packed to the gills with, like, Fifth Doctor references. You know, you've got Chameleon. You've got uh, a version of the Brigadier that you encountered in Mordrin Undead and in the Five Doctors. And you've got the Anthony Ainley Master who did appear with the 6th and 7th Doctor, of course, but had multiple appearances and run-ins with the 5th Doctor. There's even a great reference as well to the 5 Doctors. It's one of my favourite like references that they didn't need to explain, but it's so terrific, where the Auton, uh, the main like, um, Auton, um, the face of the Autons and the nesting consciousness in this story is a character named Prodigal, played by Juliet Aubrey. And she's ter like, she's terrific. She does an amazing job in this box set. She's a really compelling uh, avatar, a really compelling face for the nesting. Really great stuff. But the, the origin story of Prodigal is that basically she was one portion of the nesting consciousness that was ripped away from the consciousness and then thrown into the death zone on Gallifrey by the Time Lords for the events of the Five Doctors. So, and, and she was there waiting for the Doctor to have an encounter with her, and it never happened, implying that the Time Lords scooped up several other creatures in the death zone for the events of the Five Doctors, and many of them just never got to meet any incarnation of the Doctor. We saw the Dalek... We saw the Cybermen, we saw the Master, we saw the Raston Warrior robots, but apparently there was an Auton. Even the Yeti got to meet the Second Doctor and the Brigadier, but there was apparently an Auton in the, in the Death Zone. And it was there that Prodigal met the Master. And I would love to play you a clip from this story where John Corshaw voices the Master or voices Chameleon, because, you know, John Corshaw is an incredibly gifted and brilliant impressionist. However, because the Master and Chameleon have appearances quite late on in the story... I couldn't find a clip that was spoiler free and I don't want to get too deeply into spoilers for 42. So here's some behind the scenes stuff so you're able to hear John Corshaw's master voice. Listen closely. For this story, um, it was it was wonderful to play the, the brigadier opposite to the fifth doctor for the first time and also the, the Anthony Ainley master for the first time and so my point of research the five doctors watching the five doctors and just get up to pace with all of those familiar phrases that just lock you into the character for the brigadier ah you attract trouble doctor you always did uh, ah miss jovanka you know uh, th that sort of um, that sort of flourish and that wonderful uh every syllable is uh, absolutely beautifully enunciated and um, for the Anthony Ainley master, that sort of elegant malevolence, you know. Getting closer to the microphone, it sort of works at a quiet level. Yes, you can get me into the zone. <laughs> Rescue the doctor. All of those, you just run those familiar things. Phrases that you know and you're very familiar with. You can apply that familiarity to it and just get the right sort of sound. That can be one of those most distracting things if you're reading through something and you're thinking, oh, I haven't quite got it in this take. I'll try something different in the next go. He's so good. And the Anthony Ainley master, the Tremus master, as he's been referred to colloquially, is so good in this story. Yeah, he, he absolutely does nail it. I absolutely agree. Now, let's talk about the Auton Infinity generally. So Josh Sobchak says in the chat, do I need to listen to 41 beforehand? Not as interested in that one. Here's the difficulty, because I don't think 40 Volume 1 is a particularly good box set. I don't think it succeeds in its mission statement. I don't think the stories are particularly interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've said my piece on 40 Part 1 before. I think that 42 does a really good job at building upon the foundations and the potential of 41, 
but I don't think it quite meets the highs necessary to justify the time and financial commitment of the two box sets. I think you kind of do need to listen to 41 in order to get 42, because there are some events, and a lot of it does tie together. Like, the connection between the different, th the three seasons of uh, the Fifth Doctor's tenure, um, that wasn't a connection that I'd quite made yet, because 40 Volume 2 hadn't been released yet. But in terms of... the, the what I will say is that 40 Volume 2 is way better than 40 Volume 1, but I don't think it's going to make like my top 10 box sets of the year. However, there is one moment, one scene I should say, in the final part of 42, in the Auton Infinity, that is one of my favourite big finish moments of the year. As is to be expected, and minor spoilers for 42, but I'll try and be as vague as possible is that you get, uh, this is the story with the Nesty, and this is the story with the Autons, and there is a moment where the Fifth Doctor is able to have a conversation with himself, and the scene where he basically opens up what it means, this uh, incarnation of the Doctor, what the Fifth Doctor means to him, is beautiful. It is wonderfully portrayed, it is wonderfully acted, and astonishingly well written, it honestly genuinely nearly made me tear up. It was, as somebody who does genuinely love this incarnation of the Doctor, he's my favourite on-screen incarnation of the Doctor, that final um, soliloquy, that final monologue, really stuck the landing for me, and almost justified the price of admission on its own. I also think that if, for whatever reason, season 21 of Classic Doctor Who is your favourite Classic Doctor Who season then this is the box set for you, I think. If you are somebody who just, you know, you can't get up in the morning without watching The Awakening, or you can't get up in the morning before, like, until you know what happens immediately before the events of Resurrection of the Daleks, then this is the box set for you. There's some really cool moments in Easter eggs and some nice bits of connective tissue where we get to see what happens between some stories, before some stories. It was a really great trip down memory lane, and I think that that is what this box set, if it was trying to be a anniversary box set for the fifth doctor what it should have been all the way through i think that as a story as a whole these three stories these 12 parts going from the secrets of telos god of war to the auton infinity these 12 parts this is a, the dalek master plan of the fifth doctor's tenure it doesn't fully work however i do think it ends incredibly strongly i think that it, there is a lot of running around. There are, I think I counted roughly two or three false starts to this story. Basically, parts one and two, uh, they are different stories than parts three to six. That's all I will say. This base, th this could have been two different stories, even if the Autons are in all six parts of it. I, I also think this has a, been a pretty good year for the Autons in general. There was the really great story that they had on the River Song box set as well uh, last month. That was a really good Auton story. So with that and the Auton Infinity, they've had a really good year this year, especially considering that the Autons are a tough nut to crack in audio because they don't have voices. But yeah, I, I really like the idea, as uh, Dan Ben points out in the chat, tentacles on that unit face low. Yeah, they're, they're doing a military exercise. And they've got these masks on so that they can be the alien side in this in this test in this uh, in these military practices. And then the Autons, the Nestine, wind up possessing these masks. I think that's a really cool idea. And I love how when the Fifth Doctor appears and one of the soldiers is like, "Oh, uh, I didn't realize that the Doctor was going to be part of this experiment." And he's like, oh, oh okay, uh, w w what have I landed in? That's a really good idea. That's a really great setting. And as you can see here on the right-hand side, the circus tent, yes, that is the Master's TARDIS, the circus tent. That's really cool. It's a jam-packed box set, but I do think that it's able to balance all of those elements really, really well. I think there's some great interplay between Turlo and the Brigadier. I think there's uh, some really great stuff with Tegan, especially where this box set leaves Tegan, implying that her departure is incredibly soon. And in fact, it might actually... The events of the Auton Infinity might actually play directly into why she chooses to leave at the end of Resurrection of the Daleks. I think that that sort of writing, that sort of retconning, was really clever, and I think this box set could have used a bit more of it. 
But like I said, it is all culminating in that moment where Peter Davison, who is so good in this box set, is able to monologue to himself about what the Fifth Doctor means to him. And I thought that was lovely. I thought that was a lovely ending. Yeah, it's a it's a strong story. It's a good box set. I just think that 40 Volume 1 should have been stronger to justify this uh, level of time and financial commitment to these two box sets. Because, you know, they're like sixteen ninety nine each the ninety ninety nine uh, for for forty part one these aren't you know these aren't cheap and these are twelve episodes um thankfully all of the adric stuff does take a bit more of a back seat in this one this is good i i i liked this i liked this quite a bit i don't know if it is worth I don't know if it's quite worth it for people who are just casually into Doctor Who or into the classic era, but if you love the fifth doctor and specifically love season twenty one then you're absolutely in for a treat here. 